Welcome to Electron Online, and the topic today is electromagnetic radiation, a very big topic in physics, and we're going to start out with some basic concepts in electromagnetic radiation. So electromagnetic radiation is kind of like a wave. Um, it has wave-like properties, has particle-like properties, but in the macro scale, we're going to talk about it as a wave. So like any other wave, it has wavelengths. That's the distance from one peak to the next peak in a wave. A wave has velocity, and in this case, the velocity of light is equal to, um, the velocity of the wave is equal to the speed of light, and the speed of light is 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second, which is pretty fast. That's like 186,000 miles in one second. That's like seven and a half times around the world in one second. That's a pretty high velocity. And just like all waves, there is a relationship between the speed, the frequency, and the wavelength. Now, the frequency of a wave is the number of cycles per second that the wave goes up and down, which is quite high for electromagnetic radiation. Now, the equation is that the velocity, which is the speed of light, is equal to the frequency times the wavelength. There's one other equation that comes in really handy, which is this one right here, which is known as Wien's Law. The discovery was that there's a relationship between the wavelength of the radiation coming from an object and the temperature of the object. A lot of the radiation in the universe comes from simple radiation energy loss of objects due to the molecular vibration of the atoms and the molecules within the matter of the, of the objects. So if we know what the temperature of the object is in Kelvin, we can then figure out the wavelength of the radiation that leaves that object. So we're going to do a few example problems to illustrate that. Well, first of all, let's look at the temperature of the sun. Now, the sun radiates primarily visible light, but also some infrared and some also some ultraviolet radiation. But let's assume that the, the, the peak of the light, meaning the most predominant light from the sun, of course, is the yellow light. And the wavelength of yellow light is around 500 nanometers per second. So using this equation right here, we can then change that two and we're going to first talk about a the temperature of the sun and so we can say that the temperature using Wien's law can be uh, uh, by changing these over putting the t over there and the lambda over there we can say that is equal to 0 0.0029 divided by uh, lambda now um, uh, the number uh, lambda is going to be 500 nanometers per second, so let's plug that in there, 0 0.0029 divided by 500 times 10 to the minus 9 meters. And of course, this would be in Kelvin times meters, so we have to change the units of this constant here because we rearranged the, uh, the variables. And let's see if I have a calculator right here. I certainly do. So we have 0 0.0029 divided by 500 e to the 9 minus, and the temperature of the sun is equal to 5,800 Kelvin. That's, of course, the surface of the sun, not the center of the sun where all the nuclear fusion takes place. So that's the, the way in which we can find the temperature of any object, uh, including the human body, for example. When Nowadays, when you walk into a doctor's office and they measure your temperature, they no longer stick a thermometer in your mouth. They may do it in some places, but nowadays they simply take the infrared detector, maybe put it inside your ear, and measure the wavelength coming from the ear, and then from that they measure the temperature of your body. So, for example, let's assume that the body has a temperature of 37 degrees centigrade, which is about 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit. What will be the wavelength of the radiation coming out of your ear, <laughs> so to speak. Um, so again, we can figure that out by using Wien's Law. Wien's Law says that we have 0 0.0029 and we divide that by the temperature. Now remember that um, 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit is about equal to 37 degrees uh, centigrade. And then if we convert that to Kelvin, we must add on another 273, which means that would be about 310 Kelvin. So if we plug that into this equation right here, and this is of course now we're doing part B where we're trying to figure out what wavelength is emanated, uh, what radiation is emanated from your body. We use this equation, so we have 0 0.0029 divided by the temperature, uh, that would be 310 Kelvin. And so what do we get here? 0 0.0029 divided by 310, and the wavelength would be, hmm, uh, 9,355 nanometers, 
which can be written as 9.355 micrometers. So obviously quite a bit longer than visible light, so this is definitely infrared radiation. Okay, part C, the frequency of light. What is the oscillations? How many oscillations per second does light make uh, when it travels through space at a speed of 186,000 miles per second? So that's part C. And so using our equation right here, where we have the speed of light is equal to the frequency times the wavelength, if we now calculate the wavelength, no, the frequency here, we have the frequency is equal to the speed of light divided by the wavelength, and then the speed of light, of course, right here, 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second, 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second, and we divide that by the wavelength. Now, let's see, the wavelength of visible light, uh, we could take yellow light, we could take the same uh, wavelength that we did for the light coming from the sun, so 500 times 10 to the minus 9 meters, and that looks, looks like it's going to be a very big number, 3e to the 8 divided by 500e to the 9 minus equals 6 times 10 to the 14 hertz. 6 times 10 to the 14, 10 to 14, wow. 10 to the 9th is billion. 10 to the 12th is trillion, that means 600 trillion times per second, 600 trillion oscillations per second. Wow, that's quite a bit. <laughs> that's almost unimaginable. So light goes up and down 600 trillion times per second as it travels through space. And finally, another way of looking at electromagnetic radiation is, imagine this. Let's say, let's see, I have plenty of pieces of paper laying around right here, but here's a piece of paper. Imagine the thickness of a piece of paper. Well, the thickness of a piece of paper is about one-tenth of a millimeter. That's why for part D I have this equation right there. We're going to try and figure out how many times light cycles up and down as it travels through space and during the time that it takes to travel the thickness of this piece of paper. Now you can imagine if light travels 186,000 miles per second, whew, pretty fast, how long does it spend traveling past the thickness of a piece of paper? So you can imagine that's a very, very short amount of time. And during that extremely short amount of time, how many times does light cycle up and down? Let's try to figure that out. So the number of waves uh, for one-tenth of a millimeter of distance. So what we're going to do is go back and say, well, what is the wavelength of light? And let's again take the kind of average value of 500 nanometers or 500 times 10 to the minus 9 meters. So the wavelength of light is about 500 uh, nanometers, which is equal to 500 times 10 to the minus 9 meters, because nano is 10 to the minus 9th. And so if we now divide the distance... 0.1 meter divided by the wavelength, we should get the number of waves for that distance. So we're going to take the distance, so the distance divided by uh, the uh, wavelength, lambda, will give us the number of oscillations, oscillations per 0.1 meter, or per distance, I, I'm already plugging the number, so just let's keep it general for now. So so if we take the distance traveled, divided by the wavelength of light, we'll get the number of oscillations for that particular distance. So in this case, we're going to take a distance of 0.1 millimeter and the wavelength right here. So 0.1 millimeter divided by the wavelength, which is 500 times 10 to the minus 9 meters. Of course, if we convert millimeters to meters, we get 0.000 one meter divided by 500 times 10 to the minus 9 meters. So if we do that calculation, we'll figure out how many times light will oscillate up and down as it travels past a very thin piece of paper. So 0 0.0001 divided by 500 e to the 9 minus equals, and the answer is 200 times or 200 wavelengths. So the thickness of a piece of paper, something like this, is such that when light travels past it, it will oscillate up and down 200 times in the time that it travels 
past this piece of paper at a speed of 186,000 miles per second. And that gives you some feel, some idea, of what electromagnetic radiation is, at least from that perspective, some of the basics. In the next videos, there will be a series of them, we'll get into the more mathematical form and the more uh, physics form of electromagnetic radiation. All right, that's a good start.